In this video, we'll go over the forces acting on three objects you might encounter during a science project. Airplanes, parachutes, and rockets. Let's start with the airplane. You may have seen this diagram, which labels the four forces acting on one. Thrust, which pushes the airplane forward. Lift, generated by the wings, which pushes it upward. Drag, also called air resistance, which pushes it backward. And weight, which pulls it down. Note that a real airplane with engines applies a continuous forward thrust force. However, for a paper airplane, which you may be more likely to encounter during a science project, you only apply a thrust force when you initially throw the plane. After you let go, there is no ongoing thrust force while the plane glides. It can continue to move forward despite the absence of a forward force. Explaining that gets into Newton's laws of motion, which is a topic for another video. Let's go back to our regular airplane. You have to be careful with this diagram because it can create the misconception that lift is always up and drag is always sideways, but that's not correct. Drag is defined to always point opposite the direction of motion relative to the fluid, and lift is perpendicular to this direction of motion. It's important to remember that this motion is relative to the fluid, which can be a liquid or a gas. So the drag force points in the same direction for an airplane flying forward into still air, or for an airplane in a wind tunnel. In the wind tunnel, even though the airplane is not moving relative to the ground, it's still moving relative to the wind, so the drag force points in the same direction. What about when an airplane is flying at an angle, like it does during takeoff or landing? Now, its motion relative to the air is also at an angle, it's no longer perfectly horizontal. The weight force still points down towards the ground, because that's the direction of gravity. The thrust force points forward relative to the body of the plane, so note how it is no longer perfectly horizontal. Similarly, the drag force points backward opposite the direction of motion, so it is no longer horizontal. The lift force is perpendicular to the direction of motion, so it is no longer straight up. It does still have a vertical component and contributes to keeping the plane in the air. So, what we saw earlier with the drag force perfectly horizontal and the lift force perfectly vertical was just a special case when the plane is flying horizontally in still air. It can get even more complicated when the plane is flying and there's wind, which doesn't have to be perfectly horizontal, as in the case of an updraft or a downdraft. However, this gets into vectors, which are again a topic for a different video. For most science projects, you can do them inside in still air, or outside on a calm day so you don't have to worry about the contribution from the wind. The important thing to remember is that drag always points opposite the direction of motion, and now we can apply this to some other situations. For example, what about a person or object falling with a parachute? The person's weight pulls them down, but what about the upward force generated by the parachute? You might be tempted to call this force lift since it points up, but since it points opposite the direction of motion, this force is actually drag. It is possible for a parachute to generate lift if the person moves sideways while falling. In this case, as always, drag is opposite the direction of motion, and lift is perpendicular to it. Now let's talk about the forces on a rocket. As always, the rocket's weight points down towards the Earth. The thrust force generated by the rocket's engines points up. Since it's moving up relative to the air, in this case, the drag force points down. If the rocket tips so it isn't flying straight, then the fins will generate a sideways lift force. This helps stabilize the rocket and point it back in the right direction. We have another video about the aerodynamic stability of model rockets if you want to check that out. You can also apply what you've learned to situations where the direction of motion changes, like when you throw or hit a ball. At each point along its trajectory, the ball is moving in a different direction. When the ball is first moving up and to the right, the drag force points down and to the left. When the ball is coming back down and moving to the right, the drag force points up and to the left. The drag force is only horizontal when the ball is at the peak of its trajectory where it temporarily has no vertical velocity. Hopefully this video cleared up any misconceptions you had about which way the aerodynamic forces of lift and drag point on different objects when they're moving through the air. For plenty of science projects you can do with paper or model airplanes, parachutes, or model rockets, and over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.